Look at this view. The Battle of Salta. Imagine having to fight your roommate in a battle for independence. Cerro San Bernardo. San Bernardo Hill, right there. We're gonna go there, and we're gonna take a teleferical up to the top. And once we're up there, we can talk more about the uh, Battle of Salta. Welcome back everyone to Salta, Argentina. We are here in front of the monument of the 20th of February. El Monumento de 20 de Febrero. And that date is very important because it's the date when a very important battle was fought here, the Battle of Salta. And today, we're gonna talk all about the Battle of Salta. So come along. Thanks for clicking on the video. If you wanna help out the channel and help it grow, I really would appreciate it. Click on the like button down there, the subscribe button, and the little bell next to it to be notified for when new videos drop. It really helps the channel grow because it's gonna help the YouTube algorithm recognize this content and spread it to other YouTube viewers. If you'd like to support the channel monetarily, I would appreciate that as well. You can leave a super thanks by clicking this thanks button here and give a small donation to the channel. I appreciate your support. So back to the video, enjoy. Here across the street from the monument is a relief of uh, 20th of Febrero, Dominguez Guerrero Man Manriquez. Anyway, this is like a relief of the battle. And it was placed here in 2013 on the uh, 200th anniversary, 200th anniversary of the battle. And to talk more about this, we're gonna have to go somewhere. If you can see up in the very top left corner of this relief, there is something that doesn't quite fit with the rest of it. You can see like a teleferico, a cable car, right? A gondola going up a hill. And that's exactly what we're gonna do. Because one of the really important, well, really the only really important landmark for this battle was the uh, San Bernardo Hill, which is, uh, just that way out past the uh, horizon there you can't really see it because of the trees but we're gonna go there and we're gonna take a teleferical up to the top so we can talk more about the battle all right so here it is Cerro San Bernardo San Bernardo Hill right there as you can see teleferical lines going up all the way there oh, there's one of the teleferical cars right there heading up and the station for the teleferical it's right back there in uh, Parque San Martin. So let's go up there. Let's hop on one of these telephericals. We'll see how much it costs. We'll get up uh, to the top of the hill there. And once we're up there, we can talk more about the uh, Battle of Salta because basically this hill is, is the entire battle. This is the, the most important uh, landmark for the battle. And it's what, what they were fighting over during the Battle of Salta here in uh, 1813. All right, so it looks like these are the prices. If you're international like me, be 15,000 pesos for a round trip, 12,000 for adult or for children. If you're in Argentine, it's less. If you're a resident of the province, it's less. But actually here we can get a one-way ticket for 8,000 pesos. I think that's what we're gonna do because the, the idea here is we're gonna take the Telefetico up and then we're going to uh, walk back down along the path of stairs because, uh, well, I'm lazy. I do want to see what's along the path of stairs, but I don't want to walk up them. So we'll take the telephoto up one way and then we'll walk back down the path uh, to see what's along there. So we get the best of both worlds without having to walk up that gigantic hill. I think that's a pretty good idea. Okay, so we got our ticket, one way, one way ticket, 8,000 pesos. So we'll head up, we'll check out the top of the hill, we'll talk a bit about the battle, and then we'll walk back down. You can see the, uh, all the big gears up here all the machinery that makes the teleferical work. Very cool. Not the first teleferical we have ridden on our trip here. We had the teleferical up to the top of, uh, of 
Volcan Pichincha, Pichincha in Quito, in Ecuador, and also the teleferico up to the top of uh, Cerro San Cristobal in Santiago, Chile. Very cool. This is cool too. They have it all automated. So your ticket just has a QR code on it and you get let through the gate automated. Very cool. There we go. We're through. We're all through. And it's not very crowded here. There's not really anybody behind me. And there's just one group of people ahead of me, so I think I'm actually going to wait and try and get one just by myself. So that way, like, we can film and we can talk on the way up without being, uh, you know, like, super annoying idiot talking to camera guy, right? Sounds good. Let's do it. All right, we had to wait for a couple cars to go by before we get our own. And uh, I should politely explain to everybody that, like, you know, I'm filming a video for YouTube. I don't want to bother you. I'm talking to myself and filming while we're going up. So we got our own car, which is nice. You can see leaving the station right there. We've got the uh, wrist strap on. Switch seats here. Because I don't want to drop my camera if I like hang the camera out the window like this. I don't want to accidentally drop the camera. So we're being smart about it. And here we go. We're headed up. Up to... Uh, top of Cerro San Bernardo, San Bernardo Hill. And as you can see, now from up here above uh, the skyline of the city, the city is surrounded by hills, really, right? There's hills over there, the major hill here, San Bernardo. And then off in the distance there, you can see, I'll zoom in, more hills off in the distance. So of course, like the first name of the city was, um, what was it? Ciudad de San Felipe y Hernando Lerma en, la, en el Valle de la de Salta. Basically, the last part of that, El Valle de Salta, means in the Valley of Salta. And uh, that's what... Uh, hey, hola, hola. Got some friends there in the other car. That's what uh, gave, gave Salta its name, right? The Valley of Salta. And as you can see, it is in the valley. And that's what makes it a very important um, city strategically, right? Especially when you're fighting a war of independence. Like we mentioned in the very first video we made here um, in like the Centro Historico where we were talking about the history of Salta. Uh, it's a very important city because it's like right in the middle of major trade routes between Peru and uh, like Lima in Peru and Buenos Aires. And then also between like Tucumán in the south and up north into like Sucre in Bolivia. So it's the sort of in this middle part of a lot of trade routes. It's in a valley. It's surrounded by tall hills and mountains. Strategically, it's very, very important. And that's why it was fought over so, uh, so fiercely during the War of Independence. But we can see out back that way. Actually, if you look, let's see if we can zoom in. Right there, that is the uh, Basilica de San Francisco, I think, right? Can we see that? So back that way, Basilica de San Francisco, that's like towards the center, El Centro. And we're actually headed up the hill towards uh, the west, or I'm sorry, the east, the east. And that's where the hill is. The hill is up on the east side of the city. So if we look west, we're looking back down towards the city. And now we're now we're at like the really sort of at the base of the steep part of the hill. So we'll get going up. A little like that. This thing is rattling. <laughs> anyway, we'll get we'll get further up, and once we get up to the very very top of the hill. We'll have a really, really beautiful view of the whole city. You can already start to see the city there stretching out to the north. It's the northern part of the city over there. The centro. And then you can see the southern part of the city over there, back behind us. And of course, like I mentioned, 
surrounded by hills all over the place. It's a pretty clear day today. There's a little bit of smog you can see sort of like settling in the, um, the valley, but not too many clouds. Pretty clear day, so it's a good day to, to do this. Very good weather today for this. The city is like in this valley, so whoever has the high ground on these hills is basically gonna be able to take the city. And not to give too much away, because we're gonna talk about it more once we're at the top of the hill, that's basically what happened in the Battle of Salta. And the reason why the rebel forces, right, the uh, Patriot forces were able to defeat the Royalist forces is because they had the high ground. Over there you can see the stadium, the uh, Estadio, I don't know the name of. <laughs> I imagine that's like the stadium for Salta, for their team. Club Atletico something something. I don't know. I'll put it in the, uh, I'll put all the information in the subtitle. It's a cool view. This is really cool as we get higher and higher up. Now right here, you can see like right at the base of the hill. You see that neighborhood there? With all the swim pools and the big houses, that's like one of the richest neighborhoods um, here in uh, in Salta. That neighborhood, and then the neighborhood that's like just past it over there, um, at the at the base of the hill here. Those are like the really really nice neighborhoods in Salta. And actually, you can see I don't know if you can see there's like a little park in between the two neighborhoods that has some trees around it and a statue. And park there with the statue in it is the that's where the the foot trail ends so when we walk back down we're actually gonna walk down and end up down there by that big statue and also just FYI if you are coming here there is a road that comes up so if you have a car or you want to like you know take a taxi or something or an uber they, they'll drive you up here but the view you know from the teleferical I mean, come on. It's a great view. The view from the Teleferico can't really be beat, so it's a little more expensive than it would cost for like an Uber or a taxi to drive you up here. But, I mean, man, look at this view. There is the station. Looks like there's like a little cafe. There was a little cafe down at the bottom too. And it looks like there's a bunch of stuff to see up here. There's like this little thing with waterfalls over here. Really cool. I'm excited to check out and see what's what's all up here at the top of the hill. Because, you know, this is definitely we want to talk about the Battle of Salta because it's very important, but I also just kind of want to be a tourist and see, you know, what's up here at the top of the hill. So I think as we pull into the station, Let's be a tourist for a little while, what do you say? All right, we're off. Station's back there, we are off at the top of the hill. Now the one thing I really want to find up here is I'm sure, I'm sure there is a spot that's cleared out to be like the perfect viewpoint to see down into the city and get that perfect view of the city. So let's go find that. On the way down, there's like a little gift shop over here where you can buy some souvenirs. There's uh, this building over here that I don't know what it is. I imagine this is maybe like a staff building or like, well, let's see, hold on. Bac El Bacchiano? Bacchiano, maybe it's like a restaurant, banquet hall kind of a thing. You could have events up here maybe. What do we think? It looks nice. It looks too nice to be like an office. It has a little balcony outside. I can see there's some chairs and tables I can see through the blinds. So I'm gonna guess that this is like a uh, banquet hall event center where you can have like, you can rent it out and host an event and people can like go out on the balcony and check out the view of Salta. All right, I think right across here and past the waterfalls, I can see that this this looks like the viewing point. So let's go. Let's go get our first view of the beautiful city of Salta from up here on top of the hill. Our first view without looking through the the glass of the um, of the uh, what's it called the Zenithetical car. So right over here by the cafe where we came up 
on the Telefenico. There it is. The view of the city. They have a nice sign up here. Salta. So you can take your uh, all your social media photos in front of in front of the sign over there. But we're just interested in the view. We're interested in the view, not the clout. Holy shit, look at this view. It's great. It's a great view. You can see the entire city. And like I said, a little, ha a little hazy today, but clear enough that you can see the whole city all the way out to the outskirts on the western side, down south. And uh, I can't really see up north from this angle, but man, you can see, you can see everything. Let's see if we can pick out some of the places that we recognize there. I can see right there is the, uh, the church, I think, right there. Let's see if we can zoom in and get a shot of it. That church, that red church that's right out there. That's the uh, Basilica San Francisco. I can't tell. I can't tell from the screen, honestly, if I'm getting these shots or not. Um, I hope so. I hope you can see it. Basilica San Francisco is over there. Down there, that big park where the uh, station is. That's Parque San Martin. And uh, let's see if that is uh, the Basilica San Francisco then the Centro is like well it's kind of hard to see because there's some buildings blocking it but the Centro is just like right next to it about a block block and a half over right uh, I think right there I don't know look I will tell you right now it's kind of hard to uh, to see on this tiny little screen on the camera exactly what I'm zooming in on um, but I'm going to guess that that little area with those trees that the uh, car is passing over right now, that's El Centro. That's like the center plaza, Nueve de Julio. Amazing view from up here, really amazing. I wonder if we can see, let's see, the airport where we flew in is out to the west. So... Let's see, uh, it would be like, where would it be? It would be kind of like out that way, or no, like out that way, right on the western part of the city. Uh, I don't know, I'm a little, little confused with the direction, but, uh, oh no, actually, it's right there. I can see the runway. Can we zoom in on that? You see that runway? That's the airport. You really can see the whole city from up here. Well, let's take a walk around this little area up here, and we'll talk a little bit more about the uh, famous Battle of Salta. There's a statue here to San Bernardo de Claraval, who lived from 1090 to 1153. And I'm guessing that's who they named the, uh, the hill after. I mean, he didn't live here from 1090 to 1153, but he lived somewhere. I'm guessing that's who this is named after. So the battle, like uh, we mentioned when we were at the uh, monument at the beginning of the video, that's the February 20th monument, right? And it's because the battle was fought here on February 20th on the side of the hill. And what happened was it was an extension sort of of a battle that was fought between the same two armies south of here in Tucumán, which is uh, the city, I don't know, it's probably about by bus maybe like an hour south of here. It's pretty close. And uh, the two armies, the uh, rebel patriot forces were led by our guy, Manuel Belgrano, who we know all about from uh, like our first video here, but also uh, the video, like some of the videos that we made in Rosario, because Manuel Belgrano was very important to uh, the liberation of Santa Fe province down where Rosario is. Very important dude. 
and the Royalist Army was led by a general named General Pio de Tristan. And the two of them had fought, the two armies had fought down in uh, Tucumán, and Belgrano and his army had won. Tristan and his army had to retreat north up here to Salta. And on their way, on the retreat, they had to uh, ditch some of their artillery, their cannons. Seems to be a, uh, a dead end here. Let's go back. But they had to leave some of their artillery behind, which uh, Belgrano was actually able to capture and then later bring with him, like drag with him up here to, uh, to Salta and use against Tristan in the Battle of Salta here. And also after the Battle of Tucumán, in the process of like rearming and um, replacing some of the casualties that he had, Belgrano was able to uh, recruit some locals who knew the terrain really, really well, which gave him an advantage over Tristan and the Royalist forces who did not. So when Tristan and the Royalists came up this way, they blockaded a pass to the south, which they believed was the only way really to get into the valley from the south. So they figured that they had this pass blockaded and they would be safe here in the valley from Belgrano's forces as they advanced. But because Belgrano's forces had local knowledge of the terrain, there was a captain in his force, Apollonario Saravia. And that guy actually knew of a way to get, uh, like to get through a pass that would allow them to flank and uh, end up up on top of this hill to where they would have the high ground during the battle. So they waited until it was raining and under the cover of rain, they marched, Belgrano marched his forces up um, to the side of this hill and was able to camp out in a place where they weren't able to be seen by uh, the Royalist forces, by Tristan's forces. So on the morning of uh, February 20th, Tristan uh, got reports that there were troop movements up on the top of the hill as Belgrano was moving into position to attack. And so he sent forces out, Tristan, to, uh, to counter the attack. But they were having to attack uphill and they set up their forces with the infantry in the center and the two flanks covered by cavalry. But they had to attack uphill, which is uh, always a disadvantage. And Belgrano's forces were able to, uh, to hold off the attack with their frontline troops and able to leave like reserve troops behind them who weren't involved in the fight. And because of that, when the first fight was over and the Royalist troops were not able to break Belgrano's lines, he had troops in reserve that he could counterattack with. It's exactly what he did. Not only did he counterattack with his cavalry, but he used some of the captured artillery from the Battle of Tucumán. So they used that on uh, Tristan's forces and were able to break their lines and push Tristan and his forces back down the hill and into the city. And Tristan and his forces had set up a fence line sort of at the base of the hill around the city uh, to sort of be a second line of defense in case they had to retreat. But the problem was they sort of got blocked by their own fence line and were not able to get past it in some cases. They lost a lot of troops that way. And as they were finally pursued back down into the city by Belgrano's forces, they, uh, they were trapped. It's this very similar to the uh, Battle of Pichincha, what happened in Quito, the famous culminating battle in the Ecuadorian War of Independence against the Spanish. Basically, the exact same thing happened as happened here in Salta. And uh, similarly, there was a, it was basically the same size forces, around 3,000 on each side, which is very similar to what it was in Pichincha. Check out the video about the Battle of Pichincha and see also the beautiful view of Quito from the top of uh, Volcan Pichincha. Link in the description for that one. But once Tristan and his forces were trapped down in the city, uh, Belgrano 
offered them uh, terms for surrender, which they did. <laughs> and the terms that Belgrano offered Tristan were very, very um, generous. He offered that if Tristan and his forces gave up all their weapons, that they would be allowed to march out of the city in formation. They would be allowed to keep all of their war honors. Um, and they would basically, basically being allowed to keep all of um, the, the, everything but their weapons. So they could keep their uniforms, they could keep their war honors, and they could march out of the city um, in formation, sort of in a dignified way. And this is actually quite generous. And the reason why Belgrano did that was because Belgrano and Tristan were actually friends. They were good friends. They had both attended college in Salamanca, in Spain, in Madrid. They were actually roommates while they were attending college in Madrid. So they knew each other very, very well. And uh, I always think that that's kind of, I don't know, it's kind of crazy to think about because, you know, they were friends and they were fighting each other in multiple battles. And not, not, just, not just friendly acquaintances, but like good friends. They were roommates. Think back to when you had a roommate, right? Imagine having to fight your roommate in a battle for independence of your country. Uh, it's pretty deep. It's pretty heavy. But it all, it all worked out in the end, actually, especially for the uh, independent forces, because uh, a few years later, Tristan actually abandoned the royalist cause and switched sides. And he went and he fought for the independent, uh, independent forces in Bolivia to liberate Bolivia. So I guess it really uh, worked out and it was probably a good thing that Belgrano was so generous in his terms of surrender and allowed um, Tristan and his men to retreat with honor. But of course, Belgrano was able to capture a ton of weapons, like thousands of muskets and, uh, and more, more cannons and, and, and swords and all kinds of weapons. So definitely worked out. And from that point, Salta was firmly in the hands of the independent forces. But it didn't stay that way for long. And actually the Battle of Salta, unlike the Battle of uh, Pichincha in Ecuador, which was the culminating battle really of the whole war in that region. Battle of Salta here was a battle that took the city, but the city was fought over between by royalist forces and independent forces for years afterwards. And that's actually where we come to a very important gentleman uh, who I mentioned in the first video that we made here in Salta. That's Martin Miguel de Guemes, who we are going to make a whole video about. And in fact, it's gonna be the very next video on this channel. So make sure you stay tuned for the video about Martin Miguel de Guemes because um, after the battle was over here, Belgrano uh, had to leave, basically. He, was, he went to fight in Santa Fe province, where Rosario is, where we were. And other generals like, um, uh, like Jose de San Martin, they were all tied up fighting uh, you know, off in Chile, setting up you know, the army of... Uh, the uh, army of the Andes. So basically, for a long time, Martin Miguel de Guemes, who was governor of this province, uh, was sort of left here by himself to raise armies and defend the city and the valley here from like repeated royalist attacks after the Battle of Salta, in the years after the Battle of Salta, for several years. And like I said, he's a super interesting guy. He's a total badass. You're gonna love his story. So make sure you stay tuned for the next video to check that out. All right, I think we have found the steps to go back down, basically because there's this uh, sign here that says, Visitar el Museo de Antropología. The Visit the Anthropo Anthropological Museum, um, which actually I know is at the bottom of the hill right by the uh, plaza that we're going to. So. Uh, I guess this is where we start our long downward journey down into uh, the city. And of course, these steps are all like old stone and super uneven. So I'm not gonna film <laughs> the entire journey because I swear to God, if I get distracted, I will like trip 
and fall and eat shit on these steps or roll down the side of the hill. And uh, I don't want to do that. So uh, I'm going to keep walking. And I think along the way, there are little spots where we get a nice view. And we'll just stop and film there. Along the trail to come up here, there's uh, garbage receptacles, which is really good. And there's also little trail marker spots like this, with an image of Christ. So you can pray on your way up or your way down. I imagine more people are praying on the way up than they are on the way down because, like I said, it's a, it's a long way. It is a long hike. And if you're like me and you're like super out of shape, <laughs> you're gonna get like, I don't know, 30 or 40 steps up this thing and already be like, ah, oh, damn, what did I do? Why did I do this? So that set of stairs has ended and uh, there's a sign directing us on the road here to head over this way to catch the stairs again and I can see there's one more of those uh, prayer spots, sign, trail markers. So this is it. And actually, we're definitely not all the way down, but we've come a decent part of the way. And the trail, of course, on the steps, it like zigzags back and forth with all these switchbacks. You can see from up here. I don't know if you can see through the trees, but the trail like goes does all these switchbacks all the way down. So even though it's a ways down, um, I think we can get down there pretty quick. Along the trail there are these little spots where you can like sit and rest. There's another light here, so who knows, maybe you could sit and rest here at night in the light. But uh, I've seen a couple people walking up as I've been going down. I've even seen a couple of total psychopaths running up here. At this spot here, I think we're like more than halfway down. The hill, top of the hill is like way, way up there through the trees. The bottom, way down there through the trees. But what I've seen is the, the, the stairs do like a switchback. But in between, there are these paths that like, I guess just from people over the years going, like taking shortcuts between the stairs. There are these other paths that are like much rockier. Um, much more something that you would need like real hiking boots to tackle But I guess if you're like a serious serious hiker you come here Try those paths too. I don't know. I'm not gonna do it So we made it here to the bottom of the stairs and right at the base of the stairs. There's the Anthropo Anthropology Museum that I mentioned and right across here is the plaza where there is a statue in honor of General, General Don Martin Miguel de Güemes. In that first video we made here where we went to Plaza de Güemes, there's a plaza named after him, but there's no statue of him in that plaza because this grand MF and statue right here, <laughs> look at the size of this thing. This is for Güemes. And like I mentioned, he's a very, very important to the uh, independence movement and the battle for independence here in Salta specifically. He is a major hero here in Salta. And uh, our very next video is going to be all about him. So stay tuned for that. But I think this is gonna be a perfect place, a perfect place to end our video here about the battle of Salta. Because we went up to the top of San Bernardo Hill, saw the beautiful view of the city from up there and uh, now we're here here at the bottom checking out Martin Miguel de Guemes his famous butt and his horse's famous butt I guess anyway I think I think this is a good place this is a good place to end so we'll end our video here I hope you enjoyed it stay tuned for the uh, next video, which will start pretty much right here after we end this one. Um, so I guess we'll see you in the next one. <laughs>